Na, akkor itt az idő is elkezdjük. Greeting to those who doesn't speak Hungarian. I will tell some introduction up within a minute, and afterwards the scientific lecture will be presented in English. So, ugye, de ezért, én nem tudom, maguk látták az ezért valaha? Nem, nem, ugye akkor ő egy szerintem a egyik leg eredményesebb meteorológus az összes magyar meteorológus közül, akik léteztek eddig. És hát ő nagyon jó kolléga volt, és nekem nagyon jó barátom. Úgyhogy a feleség és a lánya létrehozták ezt az alapítványt azért, hogy évről évre előkerüljön a neve, hogy ne essen közemlékezésünkről. Úgyhogy a idei díjazott alaga a Gabriella, úgyhogy jöjjön, tartsa előadást. Welcome everybody. <clears throat> uh, so my name is uh, Gabriela Alagasa Behenzi and uh, I work here in the Metallurgical Service in Hungary in the Regional Climate Modeling Group uh, of the Modeling Unit. And in my presentation, I will um, shortly talk about uh, how the urban climate is modeled for Budapest uh, by the surface land surface model, and I will show some validation and projection results. But uh, this uh, Devini uh, model was, uh, so I applied for this model with um, a paper um, in which uh, me and the my co-author, uh, Sándor István Maho, uh, presented the validation results of, uh, of this model. So I will give uh, more detailed uh, results of this paper in the presentation. Uh, am I, so can you hear me well? well? So this is the table of contents of my presentation. So first of all, I will give a short um, introduction and the motivation uh, of our research. Uh, then I will present the surface land surface model and uh, this urban scheme, the tab. Then I will show the simulations um, with surface and the um, after that, I will show the, the, uh, the results uh, concerning the validation and the projection results. And uh, so finally, I will show some other ongoing activities and future plans. So, <clears throat> so the most program, so uh, the one of the largest challenge of our generation is to prepare for the climate change. Um, and the, uh, several aspects of the climate change can affect cities more seriously than the, the natural uh, areas of, uh, like similar settlements. For example, uh, if we consider the heat wave days, um, which is especially so the cities are especially exposed uh, to to the heat wave days, and um, this can cause a serial effects for especially for the ill and elderly people. So there is a strong uh, correlation between the heat wave days increase and the excess mortality. And in Hungary, uh, uh, there is the National Adaptation Geoinformation System that uh, provides 
uh, information for decision makers and the stakeholders to uh, adapt to climate change. And uh, this, uh, this uh, database contains information for the future heat wave day change and uh, related access mortality change based on one region and climate model. But this database uh, doesn't contain information for the cities where most of the uh, people live. So it would be uh, quite important to, to have information that how, for example, the access mortality uh, will change in the cities. Um, at the Hungarian Meteorological Service, we uh, do future climate projections based on 10 kilometer resolution regional climate models. Um, but these models, basically because of uh, its relatively coarse resolution, so it doesn't uh, contain explicit urban parametrizations, uh, parametrization. So we cannot uh, give detailed information about uh, how the climate change will affect the cities. To do that, we apply the third tax land surface model to refine the RCM projection results. So, um, in the beginning, I just uh, give a, a short introduction about the urban climate and the urban boundary layer. So, the, um, the cities have um, quite different uh, land cover and uh, the physical processes of the urban surface is quite uh, different from the natural surfaces. And what are the main um, properties? That, for example, the buildings have a large heat capacity and good heat conduction um, during the day. Uh, the sensible heat is more dominant than the latent heat since uh, the evaporation is not uh, dominant due to the lack of vegetation. Uh, there is um, uh, so, uh, so the cities are densely built up, so we can uh, talk about that uh, the radiation traps between the uh, canyons and this also adds an extra heating in the city. And of course, we can talk about the anthropogenic heat source, for example, the internal heating of the buildings. <clears throat> so the, the structure of the planetary boundary layer is uh, different over the cities than over the natural areas. For example, uh, this uh, planetary boundary layer is more turbulent over the cities. Its height is also um, higher than over natural uh, surfaces. And, um, and the temperature is also, yes, it's, it's, so it's much higher uh, in the city. Um, and uh, it's, it's also important to note that during the night, um, the, the stable boundary layer is not uh, evolved, uh, especially during the summer. So all these um, all these lead to, uh, to form the urban heat island, which is also present at the surface, at the boundary layer, and also at the subsurface of the cities. So it means that uh, the core and the surrounding suburban regions are warmer than the outer uh, natural land surfaces. At the Hungarian Meteorological Service, uh, the urban climate is studied and modeled by the land surface model. This is the land surface model of the Aladan family, like Aladan, Alaro, Arun, Harmony, the <clears throat> and NWP versions and the climate versions of this model as well. So what is the uh, role of the land surface model? Um, so, if we uh, consider, um, for example, a yeah, climate model on, or an NWB model, uh, the lowest model level of an anthropogenic of um, atmospheric model is at a few tens of meter, 
and below the surface processes are computed by the land surface model. Uh, and uh, the land surface model uh, provides lower boundary conditions to the atmospheric model, and the atmospheric model gives um, four things to the land surface model as well. So there is a two way interaction between these two model components. But the advantage of uh, surface is that it can be decoupled from the atmospheric model. So in this way, there is no feedback from the surface to the atmosphere. But um, since we decouple, uh, the land surface model can have a much higher resolution than the atmospheric model would um, Yeah, so so the atmospheric so much higher resolution than than of the atmospheric model component at a relatively uh, low cost. So in the next figure, I uh, briefly present uh, the main uh, the main components and the main processes of the surface model. So. Basically, it is a land surface parametrization, so it operates only in one dimension, in the vertical. Uh, so, to consider one uh, pixel, uh, there is four, uh, four uh, surface types that the surface can differentiate. This is the natural, the urban surface, inland water, like lakes and rivers, and the sea. And for these four surface types, there are different schemes that compute the, the physical uh, surface uh, processes, like the turbulent fluxes or the surface temperature. And in each grid cell, um, the tiling approach uh, gives that um, the area that uh, these, these different uh, land surface cover. So, so the tiling approach means that uh, it gives only the fraction uh, of these uh, different uh, so land, so land uh, cover. So, for example, in one grid cell, we have 40% nature and 60% uh, urban land cover, but it doesn't give that exactly where these uh, different surface uh, powers uh, locate. Uh, after that, uh, so for each uh, surface types, the schemes compute separately the fluxes and other surface pro uh, pro processes. And uh, finally, for each uh, grid cell, uh, the, the model uh, aggregates these surface fluxes, and, the, and so for each grid cell, we have only one value in the end, and this is that uh, the atmospheric model gets when uh, we have a two way coupling. Uh, the atmospheric forcings for the surface uh, that is coming, for example, from an atmospheric model is the temperature. Uh, the humidity, the wind components, the pressure, uh, the radiation components. Yes. And um, so this is, um, this can come from an atmospheric model. And since uh, it, this model operates only in one uh, dimension, there is no interaction horizontally between the grid cells. So the advection is not uh, handled by this in. Uh, what is the so the advantage to use a land surface model uh, to compute uh, the the urban climate processes is that uh, there is uh, a model that describes uh, the physical processes of the urban processes and also we can use a regional climate model with the the environment or the, the larger scale um, <clears throat> atmospheric processes. So this is uh, a better way than, for example, to use a statistical method when where the, the physical processes are not described. And um, 
On the other hand, um, we, so this is a, let's say it's a mesoscale model because um, it operates around um, one kilometer or a few hundred meters, which is um, a fair resolution to uh, to describe the urban uh, features in detail, but it is not uh, too high resolution. So with this model, we can um, simulate, for example, the entire century to describe the urban climate. Okay. Uh, for the uh, for the cities in the surface, the town energy balance scheme is uh, is built in, and uh, I shortly present uh, this. Scheme. So. Um, with this scheme, the, um, the cities are approximated as a U-shaped uh, canyon. Like here, you can see this, uh, uh, this uh, U-shape. And uh, in each grid cell, the average uh, building height, uh, building width, and the road width is uh, given. And for each three surfaces, a uh, different energy budget is computed by the scheme. And so, for example, we can have uh, different uh, surface temperatures for the roof, wall, and road. And uh, the water budget is also computed for the roofs and the uh, roads separately. And uh, and in the cities, the drainage is also taken into account. Um, yes, and one more um, feature is that because the heat conduction is uh, quite important in the cities, so the surfaces are differentiated. And um, so at least the three surface layers are taken into account uh, in the buildings and roads to describe the heat convection. Uh, the radiation, uh, the short wave radiation, in case of the short wave radiation, the, the shading effect of the buildings are important and it is also taken into account why in case of the long wave radiation, um, the, the trapping effect is uh, described that uh, so the emitted long wave radiation can be absorbed by the building and are emitted, and this adds also an extra heating to the urban canyon. And the anthropogenic uh, heat source in this case can be the domestic heating, which is also described in a simple way. Uh, so the next, I present uh, the simulation setup that how we run surfax. Uh, since uh, this model is the land surface model of the Aladdin um, model family, we, uh, we use a climate uh, simulation of the Aladdin climate, which is a 10 kilometer resolution regional climate model to force surface um, <clears throat> to provide uh, the uh, atmospheric forcings to the surface. First, we select a smaller uh, region that uh, concentrates to our city, which is, let's say, Budapest. And uh, to this smaller area, uh, we interpolate the results of Aladdin climate um, with a special configuration of Aladdin. This is for the E927. Um, and uh, the advantage of this configuration is that uh, it also takes into account uh, the the orography effect on the on the variables. And so we have a one kilometer resolution forcing for the surface, and in the third step we do the integration with the surface. And uh, in this third part of uh, this panel, I show the land cover types uh, over our model domain of surfax, which is based on the EcoClean Up uh, land, uh, land cover database. Uh, it is 
mainly based on um, satellite uh, observations, previous climate atlases, and previous uh, land cover data sets. It has a one kilometer resolution, so basically it determines the highest resolution of the surface. Um, and in this uh, database, there is uh, 20, 100, uh, 15 different land cover types. Uh, the next, uh, I would like to present the validation studies, which was uh, mainly presented uh, in this uh, paper. Uh, to validate the model, we uh, followed, uh, let's say, the, the classical uh, validation process of, uh, of a regional climate model. So we performed uh, two simulations. On the one hand, um, the regional climate model, which was the Aladdin climate, was uh, driven by the error interim reanalysis. Um, and this regional climate model was downscaled, or, or the, this gave the, the four things for the surface. And in this case, the simulation period was a 10 year period, 1996 to 2005. Uh, and this first simulation gave information that how the regional climate model influenced the land surface model, uh, so how the Aladdin influenced the surface. And the second simulation was a longer uh, <clears throat> Simulation, in which case uh, the forcings for the surface uh, were derived from the global climate model driven regional climate model. So, in this case, the global climate model was the CNRM CM5. The regional climate model was again the Aladdin climate. And the simulation period was 1961 to 2005. And uh, this, so the, the validation results from this simulation uh, give insight into how on long term um, this whole model, um, this whole model uh, <clears throat> joint uh, behave. So what are the, the biases of the um, this, the global climate model, the regional climate model, and the land surface model together. Um, when a regional climate model is validated, we use grid uh, observation data set like uh, EOPS or CARTA-CLIN, but these data sets are usually uh, no more than 10 kilometer resolution. And uh, the urban stations are usually uh, missing from, from uh, the interpolation. So it doesn't provide information about the urban climate. So to validate the surface, we had to use other source of observations. And on the one hand, we use the station measurements. And we, on the other hand, we use the satellite measurements. And, uh, I briefly present uh, these two type of measurements and what we used. So for the station measurements, we used um, the synoptic station of uh, Budapest, which locates in the suburban region of the city. And um, it operates a uh, long time uh, from the 1960s, as far as I remember. Uh, and the advantage of using the uh, station measurement is that it has a high temporal frequency <clears throat> because uh, since the automata uh, station measurements operate, we can have, for example, one hourly data and um, it has a high accuracy. But the disadvantage is that we have only one or a few um, station measurements, so we cannot have information about the spatial distribution of the variables. Uh, the satellite measurements, uh, we use the, the MODIS, Aqua and Terra satellites, and uh, from them we 
um, use the land surface temperature measurements. And of course, the advantage of uh, the satellite measurements is that um, uh, at least the MODIS has quite high resolution, my kilometer resolution. So we can have information about the spatial distribution of a certain variable. But the disadvantage is that um, it has, so the MODIS has only four measurements per day. And uh, the time of the of the measurements or the overpass time and the satellite uh, overpass uh, Budapest, it doesn't exactly match with the uh, model data saving time. So when we have um, <clears throat> data from surface, and um, another disadvantage that uh, it only uh, provides data from clear sky conditions. And since this is an indirect measurement, there are several uncertainty factors that contribute that it is, it can be considered as a less accurate measurement than, for example, a spatial measurement. Okay, uh, so considering the results, first of all, I will present uh, the validation of the Aladdin error entering. Uh, driven surface uh, simulation for the period of uh, 2003, from 2003 to 2005, and uh, I will focus only on the land surface temperature. So here you can see that uh, at which time uh, we have a uh, measurement from the bodies. Mm. And so surface data was saved uh, three hourly. Um, and in the next uh, results, I will present uh, a results or a measurement uh, from two, um, so two, two measurements uh, from MODIS, which is uh, the <clears throat> um, closest to midnight and the closest to, to noon. Uh, and I, or, or we, uh, compared uh, these measurements to the model. And here on the on the right uh, side of the so this this figure give uh, the, the the domain uh, where we perform the analysis. So the this colorful <clears throat> Um, we had to derive the land surface temperature in surface because it wasn't a uh, uh, variable that, that uh, computed the model itself. And to do that, we uh, applied the Stefan Boltzmann law and we used uh, the outgoing uh, long wave radiation computed by the TAP scheme and also the outgoing long wave radiation computed by the east west scheme, which uh, is uh, so which computes uh, the land surface um, or the surface parameters over the natural uh, surface types. Um, and uh, in this, so in this uh, equation, uh, the epsilon is the emissivity and the X urban is the fraction of the urban land cover in a pizza. So I mentioned that we could use only the Cloud free uh, cases. So we had to remove um, the cloud contaminated uh, grid cells or, or grid or um, yeah, grid cells. So, which is uh, was quite easy in the models because uh, it gave information about the ratio of cloud cover in a grid cell. And in case of the surface, we used the uh, Aladdin <coughs> cloud cover information. And we um, so we identified the cloudy times uh, when the cloud fraction over the whole domain exceeded 25%, and we excluded uh, these uh, times from our analysis. So in the next uh, or in this figure, you can see the uh, the observed and the model the spatial pattern of the land surface temperature for the 2003 and 2005 uh, 
uh, period in summer and the winter. Um, and uh, also at night and uh, day. And the main um, outcomes or the main results is that uh, so at in winter uh, the results are not so bad. The model is similar to the observation. But in summer, um, the surface heavily overestimates uh, the land surface temperature, also its magnitude and uh, the spread of the urban heat island as well. So, for example, at daytime, uh, there is an 8.3 Celsius difference between the observation and the model. Uh, also, an interesting feature is that uh, in the bodies at daytime, uh, on the top uh, left side of the map, uh, is much cooler than the rest of the domain because uh, here, um, this is a hilly and the forest uh, part of, uh, of the domain. And uh, so it has a large cooling effect of the, on the land surface temperature, which is partly can be seen in the surface result as well, but, um, but it doesn't uh, spread too much into the city. And um, so for example, uh, at summer daytime, um, the urban heat island can be seen only on the west side of the city, so it is the uh, right from the Danube. Um, but in the in the surface surface, um, actually the whole city is emerging with a higher temperature from its environment. Okay. In the next, uh, we examined um, this, that how the surface uh, or the surface uh, urban heat island is affected uh, to the city with a more statistical method. And um, this was followed by the Zhang and Wang uh, paper, uh, which uh, um, identified the, uh, the surface urban heat island affected area um, with that. Um, so they, they identified like that uh, this is the site of, of an investigated area where the temperature is significantly higher or differs from the average temperature of a considered area. Uh, to do this, uh, we first computed uh, the spatial mean and the standard deviation of the temperature for each time step. In, in this case, the studied area was uh, the blue rectangle area in the map. And uh, for each pixel and each time step, we applied the criteria that uh, the uh, SUBI, which so this is the surface urban heat island, affected the grid point where the temperature of um, of a grid point is higher than the mean plus the standard deviation that we computed in the first step. And um, so in the third step, uh, we summarized uh, this uh, SUGI affected uh, grid points in space and computed um, uh, the relative um, SUGI affected area by that this uh, sum was divided by the the all grid points of the area and the temporal distribution of this relative to the affected area was plotted on histogram. And uh, here is an example that how you how we have to um, <clears throat> so so what the histogram show so on the uh, x axis uh, there is this relative to uh, the area. Uh, and so, for example, if um, a bar is um, between the 30, 0 0.35 and 0 0.40 in case of surface, we can say that, uh, so the model most often um, simulated that the, this would be affected area is between 35 and 40% of the total area. Uh, 
Um, so the next, uh, I will show you the seasonal uh, results also for the nighttime and the daytime. Um, and you can see that um, the winter is quite different from the rest of the seasons in case of uh, for from surface because from spring to autumn. Um, most often, the this relative sea affected area is between uh, 0 0.5 and 40 uh, percent, and um, this is uh, overestimated by surface, um, but not in winter because in winter uh, this relative sea affected area is underestimated by the model. <clears throat> Um, and so the, in the model, there is not much difference uh, between the nighttime and uh, daytime, but uh, in the motis there is, so it, it is not so similar like the model. And we can also say that um, uh, this relative sugi affected area is more variant in reality, in the modis, then it was uh, simulated by the surfax because the shape of the histogram of the modis is more flat than of the simulation. Okay. In the next uh, part of the presentation, I will uh, jump to the uh, long-term simulation of uh, surfax when the um, the atmospheric forcings were derived from the Arpeg uh, or the so the global uh, climate model driven regional climate model, and I will present results for the two meter temperature climatology. So here you can uh, see uh, the seasonal two meter temperature evolution in uh, 1971 to 2000, and here um, uh, the the synoptic station measurements uh, was compared to one grid point, the closest grid point in the model. And we can say that uh, except uh, summer, uh, the model is quite close to the observation. So we can say that the results are much better than was uh, for the land surface temperature. Uh, but in summer, there is a high overestimation of the temperature. And we can also see that in the observation, there is a slight uh, increase with time, and uh, this forming trend is not simulated by the model. Mm. And we can uh, see that uh, if we uh, investigate uh, the bias of the driving model, the Aladdin, and uh, we compared um, the models, so the Aladdin and Surfax uh, to the 10 kilometer resolution kind of frame grid uh, database on the whole Surfax domain. And so we can see that uh, the Aladdin is also heavily overestimates the summer mean temperature. So this high uh, warm bias is derived from the Aladdin model. But, and in the rest of the seasons, uh, the Aladdin is uh, quite, un so it underestimates the temperature and the surface adds on the heating to this result. So it improves uh, the results in the other seasons. Okay. And um, there was a third part of our investigation when we compared uh, these two simulation on a common period, which was uh, the 1996 and 2005. Um, and we investigated the urban heat island at midnight at zero UTC. Uh, and you can see here the, the seasonal <clears throat> mean urban heat island uh, spatial distribution. Here, the urban heat island was computed that uh, for each litre, the temperature and the um, mean uh, temperature of the natural grid cells were uh, subtracted, and this gave the urban heat island intensity. 
Uh, so from these plots, we can see that the, the mean urban heat island intensity doesn't differ significantly between the two simulations. Uh, but yeah, there is a slight uh, difference that the, um, the global climate model driven case, so this is the surface part, is a slightly, there is a slightly stronger urban heat island intensity than in the other simulation. But if we uh, look at the temperature biases, uh, there is much higher difference between the two simulations. So this is again um, the temperature bias with respect to the Kappa clean move uh, <clears throat> grid database. And uh, in several seasons, we can see that the temperature bias um, differ uh, let's say one or even uh, one or even larger um, than one Celsius degree. And um, I just want to jump back that uh, the the surface earth experiment provide higher urban heat island, which could be the reason of this behavior, is that um, <clears throat> we examined uh, the the surface fluxes between the two simulations, and uh, I present uh, the summer uh, results uh, of this, so of the surface fluxes between the two simulations, and we can see that uh, in the morning hours, um, the G, which is the, the ground heat flux, is larger in the surface arc experiment uh, by in the night hours it is smaller so it means that um, this in this surface at experiment uh, the heat more heat is absorbed by the surfaces and more is emitted and this could contribute to the higher urban heat trend. so the main conclusions from uh, our validation studies is that uh, the spatial extension of the surface urban heat island is heavily overestimated in surfax, uh, both day and night. And um, for example, this could be a reason that uh, um, the lack of modeling the full boundary layer by the model, or, um, or that uh, a canyon concept is applied for all urban grid points, which is um, maybe not a very realistic in a suburban region. At summer daytime, uh, the surface temperature is, is less warm over Buddha than Pest, which is, uh, so Buddha is a hilly green area, and this could be also the reason that um, the urban and natural surfaces are treated separately in the model. So, for example, the shading effect of the trees are not taken into account. Uh, considering the two meter temperature, it is better described by surfax. Um, um, so here the explanation may be that the land surface temperature, which we had to compute it by ourselves from the model uh, variables, and also the satellite measurements have loaded with a lot of approximation and uncertainties also. But on the other, other hand, uh, we analyze the two meter temperature only in one grid point. And finally, the driving regional climate model has a large impact on the behavior of the land surface model, uh, but the latter can eliminate the RCM biases. Yes, and uh, so the two meter temperature bias is mainly eliminated when the urban heat island is computed. Uh, in the following, uh, I will uh, show um, studies for urban climate simulations for the future. Um, in this case, uh, we also used uh, the Aladdin climate model driven by the CNRM global climate model to force surface. And we uh, performed the two simulations with different anthropogenic scenarios, which was uh, pessimistic on the high um, emission scenario is the RCP 8.5, uh, 
and the more optimistic uh, scenario is the RCP 4.5, and we, we performed the simulation for the entire 21st uh, century. So the simulation method was the same that was already presented for the validation studies, uh, and the reference period was uh, 1971-2000, and we mainly uh, focus on 2021-2050 and the 2071-2100 uh, period. Uh, and first, um, we we had the question that how the surface uh, differs from the Aladdin results, uh, considering the temperature projections. And in this figure, uh, you can see that um, the seasonal uh, temporal evolution of the temperature uh, change. Um, the year to year um, variability is smooth with the 30 year uh, running window. Um, and the main um, outcome or the result uh, is that uh, the largest temperature change is uh, expected in winter, also in Aladdin and in Surface. Um, but uh, except uh, autumn, in every season, uh, the alad or the surfax project project uh, a lower temperature change than the <clears throat> than the regional climate model. But of course, um, the city remains warmer in the future as well. Here you can see <clears throat> a map uh, for the late uh, late future period in summer. Uh, in the Aladdin and Surfax, and in the Surfax, you can see that uh, the city center um, is much warmer than the rest of the area. Um, on the next question was that uh, how the urban areas and the rural areas uh, change differently in the future, um, and in this. In these figures, you can see that the uh, the temperature change in the uh, in the end of the century in summer and winter with the two different uh, anthropogenic scenario, and we can see that uh, especially in summer, uh, the the urban areas or the city center warm less than the outer regions or the rural areas. The difference is. Um, um, quarter degree. But if we uh, compare uh, some climate indices, here I uh, show um, warm climate indices in climate indices, which is the um, tropical night when the minimum temperature is over 20 degree, and the quiet climate indices, which is the frost days when the minimum temperature is below zero degree and the relative change of these indices. And uh, we can see that um, the ratio between the urban and rural change is um, different for the two indices because um, for the frost days, um, the cities change more uh, than the rural areas, so, so yeah, so larger um, frost days uh, change can be expected in the city center, which is the opposite in case of the tropical nights. Um, in the next, um, I will present the urban heat island change in the future, and maybe these figures are not so uh, surprising that um, the urban heat island at night uh, will decrease in the future, especially in spring and uh, summer. Uh, and uh, the next figure shows that uh, how the um, how the the three three hourly urban heat island the urban heat island change in the every month. And from this plot, we can see that. Uh, during the day or the daytime, urban heat island doesn't change much or it stays invariant. Um, and uh, in winter also, there is not much uh, change. 
Okay, so the main conclusions from these projection studies is that uh, the surface projects the smaller temperature change over the city compared to the Alada, and more moderate warming uh, is expected in the city center, which uh, leads to the decreasing of urban heat and island intensity in the future. And um, we also found that some climate indices change less in the city center than in the outer regions. So all these uh, raise the question that how to present and communicate uh, this result. Um, so when a regional climate projection result is presented, it can be in the form of mean changes when mean changes or uh, bias-suggested values. But when the mean change is, is presented for the urban projection, projections, we saw that um, uh, it provides sometimes uh, less um, a smaller change than the regional climate model. So it can lead to that it doesn't raise enough attention from uh, decision makers. On the other hand, uh, the bias suggested values, it requires uh, high resolution observations that contain the urban uh, climate information as well, which is uh, not available at the moment for Hungary. So to overcome on this problem, uh, we um, do the following um, process. Um, so to yeah, we, we apply a bias correction, the simple one, uh, with, um, on the Aladdin climate model. So <clears throat> the idea is that we correct the Aladdin climate model to the carpet clean, um, and we add uh, the urban sign uh, derived from the surface. Yeah, this is uh, presented here. So in this case, the Aladdin is corrected with the simple data change method. And the result is that, uh, so in this way, that I show uh, maps for the future summer temperature in two future periods. And you can see that um, the urban heat island is visible in this case. Yeah, so finally, um, what are our ongoing activities and the future plans. So this um, corrected urban climate projections will be implemented in the Klimadat database. This is um, an ongoing project and uh, the main outcome of the project is that um, an interactive web-based GIS platform is created that contain uh, climate projections and observations, uh, and it is dedicated uh, for the climate data users. Mm, we have simulations for SAGED as well, and um, we would like to investigate more in detail these projections to have or get insight into that how different size and located city um, will subject it to the climate change. In the future, um, we will um, use other regional climate model. This is actually the REMO that is also uh, applied at OMS uh, to force the surface. And um, with this, uh, we can take into account that how the uncertainty coming from the regional climate models can affect uh, the surface behavior. And we participate in a live project as well. And in this project, our aim is to uh, provide a surface for urban vulnerability studies. And we also um, perform sensitivity studies on different uh, urban adaptation options. And with, that, with this, I would like to thank you very much for your attention. And I would like to thank you for my uh, co-author, Shandor Maho, um, because um, <clears throat> so my application was this uh, atmosphere paper, and I would like to also thank Gabriela Kutlo, uh, who lead uh, 
Uh, who always gave uh, some good um, thanks for the, for the research. Thanks for the nice presentation. Since everything was detailed and clear, I think we must not waste the time for questions. Bad news that Patricia Devini could not come today here, but we but have I'm been... here virtually. In person. Pardon? I'm here virtually. Okay. Okay, but could, could not come to the own building. So, but she brought the Devini medal two or three days ago. So I will show you the medal. The other side. So I give to Bobby this one. And the planned program finished for today. Thank you for coming and for the participation. Have a good day and good holidays. Goodbye. Okay, so the floor is yours if you want to uh, talk, chat with each other or ask uh, from Gabriela. And if you have pogacha, of course, you can eat in between. We don't have it. No questions, I would. No. Gabriella, I will ask a question if it's okay. Do, do, do I understand that the urban heat island? was maybe exaggerated a little bit with the surfex uh, formulation. Is that what you were saying with part of your results there? The surfex urban heat island seemed to not capture some of the, uh, the heterogeneity of the urban uh, vegetation and so on. Do I understand that correctly? Uh, you mean the, in case of the land surface temperature? Yes, so that's right. Maybe it's too <laughs> urban in, in yes. the surface. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. We, so this is the main outcome of this study that so in the modis, um, the, um, the spread of the urban heat island is much smaller than it was simulated in the surfax. And so basically in, in the surfax, when, when there is an urban uh, grid cell, it, it has some uh, urban heat island, so it's warmer than the environment, which is not in the case in the observation. Okay, thank you very much. Good to see you. You, 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 Gabi, you made speculation. What is the reason behind this uh, uh, overestimation? Did you make any sensitivity study or whatever to understand more the reason? Yes. Um... Behind that. So the, so the spread so because there is so it is more spread or more spreaded than uh, it was observed. Maybe uh, it is because uh, that the trees are not taken into account in the tab itself. There is um, so there is a more 
or the newer version of the surface uh, or the tab. Um, <clears throat> there are some um, research to implement these in, in the tab and it gave better results, especially I think in the summer land surface temperature. Yes, because my impression was that the success might depend quite a lot how you parameterize the EV model mm -hmm. because that describes how the, the city looks like. Uh, in terms of height of buildings and, and this kind of yeah. things, I guess. And I think another bad approximation is that um, so the surface works only in one dimension, so there is no advection which which could also lead to this higher uh, urban heat island. Thank you. Ask one more question, Gabriella. You said at the end about maybe trying to model urban adaptations, and every city is trying to think about possible adaptations. Uh, how might you do that in your future experiments, if I understood that correctly? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so first, uh, we will do this in a quite simple method, like uh, increasing the more green areas in a grid cell yeah basically this is one of the <clears throat> the tasks that we that we would like to do um or or changing the 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 urban canyon um parameters like the width of the road or the height of the building There's a question for you that we've been wondering about with our land surface model development in the United States uh, and having the, this mosaic kind of treatment like Surfex does, because locally, uh, uh, you with this subgrid scale representation, like in the urban, then you can't get any kind of equilibrium in the vertical uh, because the atmosphere is is uniform and i and i guess with surfex now you're having the surface layer also has the uh variability if i understand that correctly but then above that then it's just one atmosphere value so do you think that uh limits the accuracy or because then the equal the local equilibrium for the fluxes cannot be reached uh at least with the deeper boundary layer. Does my question make sense? In other words, uh, uh, maybe the atmosphere can never uh, really adjust in the model with this uh, subgrid variation in the way that the real atmosphere does. Maybe you have local plumes and they really do reach some equilibrium even before they, they mix out and so we have wondered if this limits the accuracy of these subgrid uh, representations from urban and other other variations also. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I think uh, it makes sense, but then it can be also the problem of um, this tiling method that because we can uh, mix the nature and the sea as well. Yeah, but maybe because the the buildings has so it is so the urban surface is much has a higher um, height than the natural areas and it 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 can have a larger effect than for example comparing the nature and the sea. That's oh, great work uh, and very impressive. Uh, and it seems like Surfex is a great opportunity to work with also with the climate projections. So really well yeah. done. Thank you.
I'll just throw one other thing in here. You know, it's it's great that you have this medal uh, remembering uh, Deja Devigny. And so we in the United States, we remember him well, but we also remember the other Hungarian colleagues who are on this call now. And, you know, he was uh, just a really incredible, outstanding scientist. Uh, so we all remember him and it's a great honor for you to get this medal remembering him and his, you were, you were too young to know, but his effect uh, in, in Hungary, but also the United States was very significant. So congratulations. Yeah, thank you. And actually it's really nice to see that um, <clears throat> there is this uh, um, yeah, circle of friends who remember of him each year. Thank you, Stan and Gabriela, for the kind words. And congratulations, Gabriela. Thank you. Patricia, feel free to speak more, please. No, I'll leave that to you, <laughs> Andash. You, Go like for it. I know that you like to speak. Yeah, publicly, of course. <laughs> Thank you everybody for coming. Really appreciate you being here. Thank you everybody. Thank you for the invitation. Anytime. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you guys. Thank you all. You're so Great wonderful presentation. Very nice. So meet you next year. Yes. Please. If not earlier, who knows? <laughs> Meet us next year. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you for coming. Bye bye. bye. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Thank you, everyone.